Hi everyone, this is Gavin from Gavin's Gadgets and for those that are new here, hi and for everyone else, welcome back. Got another audio review. This is the Mojo 2 and I'm going to review this versus the Gryphon, i5 XDSD Gryphon and also the um, X Duo XD05 BAL. Now this does have upgraded op amps, a pair of Burson V5i-Ds, two of those in there, and that adds um, some extra cost. I'm going to put the um, prices so you can see on the screen, just to give you a value proposition perhaps. So what I'm going to do first is show you um, more about this, what you get in the box, and do some size and uh, just a quick look around all three devices and just comment on everything, show you how the menu system works as best I can. Also the unique lossless DSP. Um, if you, and I'll also, um, when I do that, I'll go through what's changed over the Mojo, the original Mojo. After that, I'm gonna do um, the sound quality of this versus these and pick a winner. It's that simple. So, let's kick off. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. Obviously get the, the, the device itself, which I've taken out. So in the box, you get the safety instructions. You get a QR code here, which is we scan that to get the full instructions. And you get a little thank you for your purchase inside here. There's uh, two uh, codes, one for Qbuzz and one for Rune. That's um, 90 days Qbuzz and I think Rune was 30. And then last but least, you get a micro USB to USB. Now, you might have seen in some videos that there was a color, uh, there was a card showing what the color balls do. That was for people that got the unit for free. That was like a PR unit thing. So this is my own unit, obviously. So this is the unit itself. It has, says Mojo 2. Um, on this side, if I turn it up, you have optical, the micro USB for charging, inputs, micro USB, USB-C down here, which is good, and a coaxial input. On this front, you have two uh, 3.5 jacks, so you can literally have, listen to, have two, you, know, you can share your audio very easily, but there isn't an independent uh, volume control. So Underneath, there's a little sticky label, there's rubber feet, and the USB-C uh, um, connector, which is that side, that's the rubber foot for that. Um, and there we have it. So how does this thing work? Well, you'll see here you have um, you have menu, volume up and down, and this does up and down and some of the other stuff it does, and power on and off. So let's just turn this on a second. And it goes through a startup sequence that actually takes a bit longer than the original Mojo. Um, but I'm just going to run through and I'll show you what you can do with the menu system. I'm also going to bring into the frame the um, Gryphon and the X-Duo in a second. But I just want to run through what this does and then I'm going to compare to those bigger devices. Right, so now you have the volume. You can see this light here is on as well. Now that's because we're in high mode. But what you'll notice is if I drop the volume down enough, that light will eventually go off and then the balls change colour. We're now in low gain. So automatically by lifting the volume up, we'll change the gain when it needs to on the volume side. So, and now you see that's gone white. Not sure how well it picks up on the camera, but the balls change colour the higher the volume. There's green, some shades of green, and blue. So very straightforward. I don't want any accidents, let me just put that back a bit lower. Now, what you also have is, depending on the source, the bit rate, that changes color and 
will show you what bit rate you're on. Um, depending which part of the menu system you're in. So at the moment when it's either off or white, you can adjust the volume up and down. Now one press and you can now change the, the uh, brightness. Let's put the brightness up for the review that might help. And that's just by pressing the minus to the actual uh, volume. Now that after 10 seconds will cut back out, as you see. But if you do the one press again, if you press this side, this is for the cross gain. So that's off, that's a little bit, that's a bit more, and that's full on. And that's where I had it. It's actually quite nice on some of the headphones to have, but you can do that on the fly. It's very, very straightforward. Now what you then can do is if you press this more times, so you've got, you can adjust the, um, that has a, a lossless DSP. So if you press it twice, you're now into the first bass, then the second, now into the treble, one of the, and I'll put some things on screen to tell you what each one's doing. And finally, this is where you can actually lock the keys so when you've got this in your pocket, you don't end up with um, the keys being, the buttons being pressed easily. I do find this quite easy to change everything with this sort of blindfolded, because it's very easy. These buttons are slightly smaller than you know the ones in the middle are the volume. Now, this is also the case for it, which I'm gonna show you. This is the official Mojo 2 case, which I thought was quite handy to get. And it, let's put that in. So, um, obviously, gives you nice, easy access to the, the buttons with this red stitching. I really, really like. And then you have here, um, the USB-C is fine, but it does help, just grab, to have a USB-C cable with a low profile like this one. You can see that. It's quite thin, because that plugs in nice and easy and the case doesn't get in the way. What I have found with the micro USB, this one, before I put the charger um, cable in, I just bend this, bend this back a bit because sometimes it got in the way. You can see that's up, that covers um, it slightly, so you just have to bend it down. It's not a big deal. It's just got a bit, it was a bit stiff, so it, was, it got in the way at first, but as I've used it more, softened up. You can see there's a LED light here. This um, changes depending on the battery level, and it has different colours depending on the um, how strong the battery level is. Uh, when you're charging it, it can it will flash as well. And what you'll also have is when you're uh, charging, the light will come on to show that you're, if you've turned everything off, one of these balls comes on to show that you're charging. And when it goes, when it's fully charged, it can switch to intelligent desktop mode and the ball turns purple. So that is really clever. Now, how does this compare to the, let's do to the X Duo? Well, size wise, whichever way you want to cut it, um, it's, there's a massive difference, you know. Um, I'll put the weights up as well, just so you can see the weight difference between these. So, this, and I'll talk more about the features of this. Um, in terms of inputs, this has, um, has an auxiliary in or out. So that's this where this, everything on the, uh, everything on the, cord is digital in. Here you actually have a switch where you physically can turn the battery off by using external. Uh, it will still recharge the battery to full when, when it's switched that way, but it's actually not using the battery. USB in, AES, that's where you charge it, and coaxial optical in from that particular option there. I've, these feet I've came in the packaging, which I've stuck on. There's a lot of accessories you get with this. This also has Bluetooth. It has a mic for when you're using Bluetooth for calls. So you have the volume here, which is uh, can be quite awkward, but it's, you get the hang of it. It's quite straightforward. You have the rubber feet that I've stuck on that provided in the pack packaging with all the accessories for this. And uh, when you turn this on, you can see you have various options, but the giveaway here, that's a 6.3 as opposed to a 3.5. 
So this is designed um, for bigger headphones. I'll explain more about this when I talk about sound quality. That's your 4.4 balance on-off switch, voltage boost from 8 to 13 volts, and lower high gain. Very straightforward. Oh, you've also got on this side here, you've got uh, the Bluetooth uh, pairing. You can change the different filters, press a button and change the input here. And you have some controls with the Bluetooth, skipping tracks, that sort of stuff, which you can do from the button there. What about against the legendary Gryphon? Well, if you have a look again, size wise, you can get an idea on size. Quite a big difference there. Um, and you can see it's you know quite a big difference there. And that's with the case on. I think it's quite useful to have the case. Um, in terms of inputs, there is a difference here. Uh, this is where you can adjust the base control. This is your charging, there's your light. That's the USB-C. Notice USB-C, USB-C, rubber feet on the bottom. This has the ability to, it's called IE match. So when you're using either 3.5, 4.4, you just slide the switch whichever way you need. Um, outputs, 3.5. 4.4 balanced, um, shows you LED lights, what it's doing. You also have bass boost, just one press for a button, no DSP or complicated uh, DSP. Um, the Chord Mojo DSP has quite a huge range of adjustments, some ridiculous amount of adjustments that you can do, both from the bass and the treble. I say it's the first lossless DSP, so it's pretty amazing what that can do. Uh, X space, you can have both on, and you can go into Bluetooth. You can go into uh, the menu system as well. So, press and hold. So, this has its own sort of menu system here as well, and that's something that and it makes it easy to see what you're doing. Um, this also is MQA, full MQA um, uh, comp compatibility as well. So, we have three different portable amp DACs. I'm now going to talk about the sound quality. Okay, welcome back. So you've seen everything. You've seen what this does and its uh, capabilities. So from a musicality point of view, this thing shines. It's utterly amazing. It's small. It's uh, a lot more portable um, than any of these, which are called transportable. It's lighter as well. And you listen to music for hours and hours without realizing when you plug this in. Now there's no balanced because Chord do not believe balanced is the way to go for the best sound with their gear. Completely unbalanced. And I think for this device, they've got it right. What it means is I have a drawer of unused 4.4 balanced headphone cables and a lot of them. So, hey ho. Um, I've used these with um, some Hi-Fi Man Aria with the Stealth Magnets. No trouble powering those at all. The, um, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's in view or not, but there's the Sennheiser HD600 over there next to the Arias. Um, they're 300 ohms. They need more grunt, more volume on this uh, to be powered than the Arias, believe it or not. Uh, but again, no problem at all. The Sennheisers worked really well. I then tried a range of IEMs, and because of the way you can go really low into low gain, again, no issue with that at all. Basically, the white ball here, where my finger's touching, when that white ball goes off, you're in low gain, and as you increase the volume, the white uh, button comes back on, and you go into high gain. But it's very, very straightforward, but not when you first get it. So, um, first thing I'll say is that uh, the ball system with the menu and the DSP is really confusing, uh, which is why um, you need to have the manual in front of you to understand how this lossless DSP works, or the EQ. But it's not like any other EQ, because if you adjust that there's two options on the, um, the DSP for the bass on the shelf, but if you adjust them, you don't just adjust the bass, it, it, it bleeds into the other frequencies. And the reason it does that is so it's not um, doesn't distort music, doesn't affect the actual pure sound that this is actually producing. 
that doesn't have an analog in it's all digital in um, they have added a uh, USB-C input but no use it's still micro USB to charge I mean it's that you know that's a my only criticism is that yes they do provide the cable and in theory once you set it up you know you have charge point fours on your desk it doesn't really matter but behind me I've got five USB plugs you know charging and there's one over there um, and yeah I've got to keep a micro USB the light that I'm using with my camera charges by USB it also charges by Qi charging that's how advanced that light is another um, light I have also USB-C only my six seven year old lights for camera gear that's really really ancient they micro USB there's a really old waterproof shower speaker I have which is just sitting on top up there that's the Polk Swimmer Duo that's micro USB but that's it everything I've got is USB-C so why on earth did um, Cord Electronics keep the micro USB for charging that was so it could work with their poly streamer which clips on sort of boom to that and that's why so it gave people that had some existing product compatibility and because they are selling to fans their own fans I can get that but it's a shame um, that happened but in terms of uh, depth transparency treble mid is such an analog sounding sound it's so musical so engaging but before I give the final sort of synopsis of that I'm going to start comparing them to these two and then I'll tell you which one is the best and why so here we have the X duo with its upgraded op amps so that's the reason you put the versions in there is to try and give that a more analog sound but you'll notice it doesn't have a 3.5 it's 6.3 and 4.4 because this thing is a power monster it is a beast it's the heaviest the biggest um, and it can power um, it's unbalanced output it's a thousand milliwatts it's balanced there's also a thousand milliwatts this thing and that's continuous not max this thing just is huge and with the voltage up but you can increase the voltage from 8 to 13 volts this will power anything with these even awkward planets so this and has Bluetooth as well so this has all the connections also you can go analog in with it aux in or out as well it does out does Bluetooth has a mic it's an all-in-one it's a powerhouse I would describe this as a big American muscle car and you're charging down the road and it's fantastic you're sitting there you can feel the noise feel the vibrations absolutely fantastic until you get to a sharp bend and that's when the finesse of this disappears slightly also if you use a lot of IEMs this isn't the device for you so this isn't the winner okay it's great it'd be a winner for you if you predominantly used big powerful hard to drive headphones or even just over the headphones sound great um, but this is stuff where you haven't got very very sensitive headphones but worth knowing it's still really good but not the winner so now we get to um, the Gryphon and the Mojo 2 and this is really the ultimate punch out so difference in price by about um, 150 pounds more expensive the Gryphon but this does have um, a, a OLED screen so you can see what you're doing a menu system um, it's had lots of updates of grey firmware updates since it's been running um, it's nice it looks nice it's great with IEMs it's great with powerful headphones this in the 4.4 balanced it's more can kick out more power but not in unbalanced and unbalanced this is the more powerful but in full balance this just absolutely tops it so how would I describe uh, the difference well this is the better quality device if wired sound matters it doesn't have Bluetooth the mojo but in wired this is better okay this is very, pretty close it's not far off it's a warmer sound 
the iFi, if you've listened to other iFi products, you'll know what I mean. But this is a warmer sound, but it has slight neutrality. It's not as warm as some of their um, other offerings, which is why I really like this. It's simpler. If you want bass, you just press their bass boost button or X space or X space for a wider sound stage, like a live concert. Um, and it does have good Bluetooth. It also has MQA. So what you're paying for for that extra um, money for this is if you need Bluetooth, you've got to go with this. If you need MQA, you've got to go for this. But if you don't need either of those, you buy this because this is so damn addictive. Now, I've done a separate review on that and I'll leave it to one side. I'm going to finish off and explain how this is slightly better sounding than this. And what you will do, if you get this and you play a track and then you switch to the Gryphon and you switch back, you may not notice the difference straight away. You need to spend hours and hours listening to this and then it becomes obvious. The more you listen, the more you realize every song is being portrayed in a wonderful, magical, you're in a different world. And I'll describe this using the car scenario. This, you're on a Ferrari, latest Ferrari with the latest cornering technology. And it's so precise, everything it does really well. And suddenly you lose connection, but you can switch to Bluetooth and work wirelessly. This is the new super duper hypercar that's just come out that corners as if it's on rails, but it does it as it, but when it goes around the corners, it flows mu musically. If, the, if suddenly you need more power or there's less power, it all, it glides up and down with incredible pace. It's really fast. It's really dynamic. It gives you bass. It gives bass depth, sub bass. It gives you treble, mids. They are delicious. Um, I know it sounds a bit over the top, but it really is. Um, I didn't think this would be as good as it is. And because it is so good, I can kind of forgive that micro USB. I'm not happy with it, but I can forgive it. But again, if you want Bluetooth, you pick this. However, if you've got really hard to drive headphones, or you predominantly use very high ohm headphones, then you really might want to drop back to this. I hope that helps. I'll answer every question. This is Gavin from Gavin's Gadgets. Take care guys. Bye for now.